In this video, we're going to look at um, a few special cases of um, Bernoulli's equation, which I've written here first, special cases where maybe the height doesn't change or the speed doesn't change. Um, to attack both of these issues, we're going to use Bernoulli's equation, which is I've written here, and the continuity equation, which I've written here. We've seen this in the last uh, a couple of videos ago, if you're in my class and following along. This is basically, uh, you, it's usually written like this, where Q is the flow rate. Uh, when we unpack what Q is, what that flow rate is, we find it's the air, the cross-sectional area of uh, whatever section of the pipe or container we're in, times the speed of the fluid in that particular, um, in that particular section. We've seen that if the pipe constricts, like I've drawn here, the speed increases, which is what I've drawn. And of course it goes the other way. If the pipe expands, the speed decreases. But we're going to use both of these equations to look at what happens when something does not change height. So if I, you know, draw an imaginary line down the center of these two pipes, I have drawn them concentric upon each other, and so this, the middle position here represents the center of mass of the, the sections of fluid. Um, I'm assuming that fluid is filling the entire container, right? So the center of mass is going to correspond to the geometrical center. If that's the case, then there is no change in height between as we move from this region into this region. Let's call this region 1 and this region 2. So if that's the case, then H1 is equal to H2, and I have the same additive term on each side of the equation. I can just subtract it out if I want to. But in either case, the, the last term goes away, and I'm just left with P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared. So you go to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. So again, we're thinking of this in terms of energies. This is Bernoulli's equation is just a restatement of the conservation of energy. Uh, it's formulated in terms of the energy density, right? the energy per unit volume. This is kinetic energy per unit volume. This is gravitational potential energy per unit volume. So if that is the case, let's see what happens when to the pressure in the internal pressure in this section of the pipe compared to this section. So maybe we're going to put a pressure gauge on this. It looks kind of like a light bulb, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. And let's say we have the pressure in this first section, you know, some baseline and what we want to know is how that pressure changes as I move from section 1 to section 2. Okay, so let's write down what we have left. P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. Now, of course, without numbers, we're not going to know exactly what V2 and V1 are, but we can do some work with that with the continuity equation. Uh, if I am going to solve for V2, if I want to know what V2 is in terms of V1, I can solve the continuity equation for V2. If I do that, what, what am I going to get? I'll do it over. I'll do it here. Um, I'm going to get that V2 is equal to A1 over A2 V1. I'm, I'm going to get that in any case, but in this specific case, I've called this one and this two. And as you can see, area two, that's going to be the cross-section area of this section of the pipe, is less than A1. And so I'm going to find that V2 is going to be greater than V1, right? A1 over A2 is um, greater than 1. A1 over A2 is greater than 1. The cross-sectional area of this section of the pipe is greater than this. That means that in this section, V2 is bigger. Now, we know that already, but let's see what happens down here when I make that substitution. All right. P1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared is equal to P2 plus 1 half rho, and now I'm putting V2 in terms of V1. It's a pretty standard procedure if I want to compare things. I'm going to square all of this, so I get A1 over A2, and that quantity squared, and then V1 squared. Remember I've said that 
a1 over a2 is greater than 1. So let me solve this. Let me collect like terms. I'm going to get p1 minus p2 is equal to this term, 1 half rho a1 over a2 squared v1 squared. So that's this term, minus 1 half rho v1 squared. This is going to become more illustrative if I do some factoring. That's going to be equal to 1 half rho v1 squared times this. It's a1 over a2 squared minus 1. Okay? And that's equal to p1 minus p2. All right. So we're going to have to do some thinking through this. Again, we don't have you know, values for these, but that's okay. You can see the physics much better without the numbers. So let's examine this parenthesis over here, or the brackets, I should say. We've said that a1 over a2 is bigger than 1. If that's the case, a1 over a2 quantity squared is bigger than 1. Therefore, a1 over a2 quantity squared minus 1 is greater than 0, right? That means... What's in the brackets is greater than zero, just as a reminder. What does that mean? Well, rho is always defined positively. This is a speed which is always positive, and then it's squared to be, you know, anyway, so it, everything here is positive, uh, which means that this entire side is greater than zero. Every term, uh, this one, this one, this one, and the, the brackets are greater than zero. That means the right side is positive. What does that mean for the left side? The only way that's possible is if P1 is greater than P2. It has to be. It has to be the case. This Notice this actually comes directly uh, from the continuity equation, just solving for the relationship between V1 and V2 in terms of the areas and plugging that in here. I, I find it. So this is not a, you know, something that only happens in this particular, you know, drawing. Um, this is a general result. Now, of course, if I'm going the other way, I will find a different result. But this is a general result. So what happens here is that means the pressure goes down as I move into section two. That leads us, this is the Bernoulli equation, of course, but this leads us to what's called Bernoulli's principle which is uh, that the pressure, the internal pressure in a fluid decreases if the speed of the fluid increases. Uh, and it goes the other way. Of course, the pressure decreases, sorry, the pressure increases if the speed of the fluid decreases. That means as this fluid is flowing through this section of the pipe and is come, is, uh, con the pipe is constricted and the fluid then has to move faster to preserve the flow rate, I find that the pressure in that portion drops. Okay, so now is a good time to point out that this is one of the things that makes airplanes fly. Most of us know that an airplane has a cross section of the wing that's sort of teardrop shaped. That's a very, very, very crude. Um, uh, airplane wing, but what happens is this thing is cutting through a fluid, right? Air is coming this way, and it doesn't actually matter if if uh, you consider the air to be moving or you consider the plane to be moving through the air. The velocity of the air with respect to the wing is going to look like this. Now, as the wing comes in here, the air has to split, so part of it goes over here and part of it goes here. Now, we're gonna make a somewhat crude assumption that if the if two particles of air are next to each other here, they are next to each other at the tail end of this thing. And we're gonna invoke some ideas like inertia, and this thing is moving so fast that they don't really have time to sort of, um, they get pushed out of the way, of course, by the wing, but they don't have time to get uh, off, all catty-cornered from each other. Uh, it, it's not exactly true, but it, it's a decent enough assumption that we can make it with, with no loss of generality. 
So if that's the case, notice what happens. The air molecules that go up here have to take a longer path than the ones that go down here because of the shape of the wing. What that means is that relative to the wing, these air molecules are moving faster. They have to go a longer distance in the same amount of time. That means here the, the velocity here, again, with respect to the wing, is high. The velocity here is low. What that means is that the pressure here is high and the pressure here is low. And you get a force on the bottom of the wing now because of that difference in pressure that is greater than the force on the top of the wing. This creates lift. Now, I have been talked to by several aviators that have been in my class, and they, they, they pointed out something that it is absolutely true. This is not the only thing that's holding an airplane up in the air. There are other considerations you have to bring into, but this is certainly uh, a big part of what keeps an airplane in the air is the idea of lift. Notice the airplane has to be moving for this to be the case. You have to have a relative velocity between the air and the wing, and because of the shape of the wing, the airfoil, you get a, a pressure differential that seeks to equalize, and you get a pressure up on the bottom of the wing. There are actually all sorts of other examples of this, from helicopter blades to the shape of sharks, which is really, really fascinating. Um, but this is found all over nature and all over engineering, the idea that um, a pressure differential occurs because of uh, differences in relative velocities of a fluid. That's the Bernoulli principle at work. And you feel free to Google other examples of that. Google uh, Bernoulli principle and Titanic. That's a really interesting one. It turns out the Titanic almost never left port because it almost collided with another ship because of the Bernoulli principle. Um, the shark thing is really interesting. That's one of the reasons sharks have to keep swimming is because if they stop, they'll sink. Um, the, uh, as long as they keep swimming, their bodies create lift, and that, that keeps them up in the water. It's really, really fascinating. But that's the Bernoulli principle. Or at least that's one application of the Bernoulli principle, which is the idea that as the fluid speed increases, the pressure decreases. All right.